Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to have a conversation this morning with Ariel. She's joining us to talk about her journey of finally receiving a, a proper diagnosis of a very rare genetic disease. Thank you for taking the time this morning. Thank you so much for having me, Neil. We'll give our listeners a bit of background about yourself and uh, you know, brief, briefly describe uh, who you are, what it is that you, you do, and how um, AHP has affected um, who you are and what it is that you love to do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, my name is Ariel, as you mentioned. Thank you so much for having me on the program. Um, I'm a, a lawyer by training um, and, uh, and a mom um, and just a a busy on the go kind of gal. Um, <laughs> I uh, I was diagnosed with um, with acute intermittent porphyria, which is a type of AHP um, uh, HCP, uh, about um, ten years ago. Um, and uh, and for for your listeners who who know a bit about about HCP and porphyria as a group, um, or those who don't, um, it's a a group of disorders. Um, that uh, that impacts the way that your body metabolizes heme. Um, so in the early days of of um, of my symptoms, uh, I I was terribly ill um, and uh, and didn't understand why, and my doctors didn't understand why as well. And the journey to get to a diagnosis um, took for me several months. For for a lot of people with HCP, that journey can take years or decades. Um, but, uh, but for me, I was, I was fortunate to get a diagnosis relatively early on in the process, um, and, uh, and had to learn how to live in a new way. Um, the symptoms of, of my kind of HCP and, and for, for many other patients, um, can be absolutely debilitating and, uh, and disabling. So, um, so periodically, um, that's the, the intermittent part. I get sort of terrible uh, and severe episodes. That's the acute part um, of uh, of just extreme, extraordinary um, pain, systemic pain, but also um, but also stomach, uh, particularly, uh, and gastro uh, gastro uh, pain that that also includes intractable vomiting and um, and uh, general sort of um, tiredness and and inability to 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 get on with my life in any kind of normal way um, it requires um, just a lot of pain medication just to, to to manage the pain and to get through my day um, and the, the symptoms of the disorder and the attacks if if untreated can cause very significant and serious health risks like seizure um, or uh, paralysis um, and certainly in, in extreme cases, death. Um, in, in, in my case, um, I've, I've struggled with debilitating pain and intractable vomiting, uh, weakness and um, partial paralysis and nerve damage uh, for, um, for many years of my life and in the journey to find a successful treatment. Now, you said it takes sometimes many years for a patient who, like yourself, has AHP to get a proper diagnosis. All of the symptoms seem to to be symptoms of so many other ailments that are readily identifiable. What is it about AHP that, as you say, stumped your doctors for several months and stumped others doc- other doctors for several years? Well, that's exactly right, Neil. So they they call they call porphyria the great imitator because the symptoms associated with it are so varied that they don't seem to be connected to a single um, system in the body. So so diverse symptoms like like terrible um, abdominal pain and intractable vomiting, when combined with things like nerve pain or seizures um, or or paralysis or uh, sometimes, sometimes mental disorders as well. Sometimes um, difficulty processing things um, mentally. Uh, it doesn't fit into a neat category. So any of those symptoms might trigger a doctor to say, "Oh, hey, I know of a of a, a, a common or or a, any kind of disorder that I've heard of and know how to test for that that meets some of these criteria. I'll test for that." Um, but in in a lot of cases, you're not getting a result. Um, in 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 the case of HCP, HCP and and AIP, certainly, um, you're not getting 
you're not getting a hit on those more common ailments or disorders. And I think for doctors as well as for patients, um, it's a confusing array of symptoms. It looks like so many other things. Um, and when doctors test sometimes easily for those other disorders and, and sort of weed them out early in the process, um, they're, they're left with sort of the idea that potentially the patient is, is exaggerating some symptoms or maybe a lot of this is psychosomatic or um, maybe it's a, a, a much different ailment. Um, and a lot of times, um, you know, in, in my case, I was, I was misdiagnosed several times um, with things like um, a postoperative ileus, with things like um, uh, ovarian cysts or um, a urinary tract infection or uh, bladder problems or uh, potentially um, um, hepatocellular carcinoma or something like that. Um, but all of those tests eventually came back negative, confusing the medical team even further because I was presenting the symptoms for a lot of those diseases. Um, I think because HCP, uh, the category of diseases are so rare and so unusual, um, for a lot of doctors, it's just not first to think of. Um, they, they, they test for the common ailments that they see, you know, maybe every day or every week. Um, and, uh, and you have to get pretty far down the list to start looking for rare disorders like HCP. Who's affected most by AHP? Is it age-related? Is it specific to, to men or women? Who is affected mostly? Um, so the way I understand it, um, it, it's, it can affect anybody, uh, but there are more documented cases in women. Um, and it, it is, um, my story is actually, uh, is actually pretty sort of um, standard as far as these things. I was, I was perfectly healthy, actually, um, for, for most of my life and didn't get sick um, until a sudden onset at about age 30. Um, and that's, that's not unusual um, for, for people to live perfectly normal, healthy lives. And then later, later in life, sometimes as, as late as, as, um, as 30 or, or well into their 30s, people can um, start presenting symptoms um, of AHP that were, were previously dormant. Now, it is, it is a genetic disorder, so that doesn't mean I, I got it or, um, or suddenly had it when I was 30. It means, um, it means that it was always there in my system, but it hadn't been triggered. Um, so nobody had ever thought to test for it. I didn't have a family history of it that I knew of. Um, and so when the symptoms started presenting themselves, um, it, was, it was really mostly out of a clear blue sky. So how are you uh, managing now? Well, it's been it's been a long a long journey, Neil, to get to um, to get to where I am now, which is a pretty good place. I was fortunate enough um, in 2016, after um, after about six or seven years of suffering from very regular debilitating um, attacks on initially a monthly and then as often as a weekly basis, um, and struggling to, to to just maintain my health. I was fortunate enough to um, to have the opportunity to participate in an early stage clinical trial um, for a new medication that's on the market um, now. Actually, it's just been through FDA approval, which is exciting, and I um, I'm hoping that uh, that it's going to bring relief to um, to other people who suffer who suffer from hepatic porphyrias. Uh, like it has for me. So since I've started um, on the clinical trial with Givlari, this medication, um, my life has improved significantly. Um, I went from being hospitalized um, several times a year and from having weekly um, iron infusions and um, taking hormone therapy to try to manage my my symptoms. Um, I've 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 gone from from that which. I still had breakthrough attacks, so mm -hmm. I was still suffering tremendous pain and still um, still needing and requiring regular hospitalization and, and a lot of hands-on care. Um, since I started under Givlari, I've, I've only gotten better. Uh, I haven't had um, I haven't had a single hospitalization um, since I started the clinical trial, uh, and um, and uh, I've been. I've been almost two years attack free at this point, wow. which feels great. <laughs> now, Givlari is um, Al Nylum's uh, Al Nylum Pharmaceuticals uh, product. Is that correct? 
That's right. Where can our listeners go online and get some more information about uh, Elnilam Pharmaceuticals, Givlari, and about uh, AHP in general, and talk about some of the uh, the awareness that's uh, needed and some of the stigma that goes along with such a diagnosis? Okay. Oh, thank you so much for asking. Yeah, so, um, so I'd recommend to your listeners, um, if they... Um, if they want to learn more about porphyria, to go first to the American Porphyria Foundation, um, also known as the EPF. Um, the website for that is porphyriafoundation.org. Um, uh, porphyria is sort of a funny word. It's a, it's a Greek word, so it's spelled P-O-R-P-H-Y-R-I-A. Um, and uh, the American Porphyria Foundation can can certainly direct them um, to doctors and resources in their area. They can provide information packets to doctors, um, and they can put them in touch uh, as well with um, uh, with the pharmaceutical company. Um, you can find out more information about Al Nylon, particular to Givlari, at um, alnylamassist.com slash Givlari. The medication is spelled G I V. L A A R I, um, and um, there's there's just a, a wealth of information on there. And I appreciate you asking, sort of, um, you know, what what sort of can 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 people uh, can people do to to understand and 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 better get information about um, these these disorders because they are um, they are terribly debilitating and um, and they can be incredibly isolating and damaging um, both to the to the bodies of the patients who suffer with them as well as uh, the families and caregivers um, and and friends and social networks of of, of patients who um, who have who have trouble and struggle with getting a diagnosis and um, and who have, have trouble maintaining a lifestyle with uh, with such a very serious disease well I thank you Ariel for joining us on the program this morning quite uh, enlightening and uh, I wish you well Thank you, Neil. I appreciate you having me on, um, and, and thank you so much for the opportunity. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.